Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today we're talking Sex in the City movie. So last episode we saw her on the honeymoon. We saw her friends rallying around her. And we pick up where she's getting on with her life. She's back in Manhattan. We'll see what happens here. So this is going to be the second to last episode of the movie. Breaking it all down. We're going to talk about the, some behind the scenes stuff. Let's get into this. But first, check out my merch link below. I got Midnight Toast. Justice for Steve. It's a load of pants. Or find me on Patreon. It's patreon.com backslash Real Housewives Recaps. So we pick up with Carrie's new brown hair and she's got a new phone number. So this is kind of a funny plot point. I used to work in cell phones. Basically, you wouldn't have a new phone number unless she had the plan with Big, but it doesn't sound like it because she had an old phone. But it sounds like she threw her phone in the water. You would just get a new phone, not a new phone number. Oh, well, that's not where the movie goes. She got a new phone number. Samantha decided to go shopping. She buys a dog because she can't have sex with Smith as much as she likes. She likes to buy things. She's checking out her neighbor and hello, I totally get that because ooh la la. So while she's out shopping, she spots this little dog. She falls in love with him. They explain that the dog, or sorry, it's a girl. The dog's fixed, but doesn't matter. She still likes to hump everything. So Samantha, <laughs> like, recognizes like she wants this dog. So Louise and Carrie, they are going through some things. Louise is eyeballing the shoes. Carrie opens her last box, and what's in it? Her wedding dress. She says she'll bury it deep inside the back of her closet like she did her feelings. She does admit that she misses Big every day. And suddenly it dawns on her there are two broken hearts. Louise, we need a cocktail. So it's here that we learn more about Will, the guy that Louise loves that didn't work out. She says she's going to give up on love. He lives back in St. Louis where she's from. But uh, she's getting texts from this other guy who wants to meet her from drinks. It doesn't really go anywhere. I don't know why they included this, but I guess just to show she's young, she's fun, she's cute. Of course guys are asking her out. Uh, and Carrie is excited for her. Meanwhile, we have a scene with Charlotte and Carrie. So we find out Carrie's going to redo her new apartment, or her, uh, not new, her old apartment. She's using this book advance, and she's going to redecorate. Harry called and mentioned that Charlotte is no longer running and it's got them concerned. Charlotte is afraid something bad's going to happen. I really do appreciate the storyline for Charlotte. Uh, I think they did a good job with that. I'll say that. She says she's terrified, but Harry comforts her and says, Sweetie, you shit your pants this year. Nothing else will happen. So uh, we see that Charlotte works her way up to running and... Carrie had told her, you can't just stop because you're afraid. You can do this. So she's nervous. She goes slow, but she does it, and we see her running. Uh, side note, those, those are Chanel <laughs> earmuffs that she's jogging in. I was thinking, gosh, when you get sweat all over those, and I'm sure they cost more than my house. Um, okay, so we see the passage of time while she's running. Louise wants Carrie to RSVP so to, to some parties that she's invited to. Uh, Carrie's telling her, listen, you got to go. You're going to miss your plane. And so she's going back home for the holidays. And so Louise says, I have a present for you. She gives her a DVD. It's meet me in St. Louis. Carrie says, well, if I'd known we were exchanging presents, I wouldn't have got this one for you two weeks ago. It's her very own Louis Vuitton. So she screams, she opens it up and she says it's the best money she ever spent. So then we see Miranda talking to Brady about what to do at New Year's, just signaling that she won't be with him. Steve's picking him up. She says it's rough, and she can hear them having fun through the door, and he's saying he'll see her tomorrow. So it's setting in that she's alone. We're seeing a turn in Carrie and a turn in Miranda here. Meanwhile, we have Carrie watching the movie. So after this, she, she sits there with her cup of noodles, and she thinks about it. She tries to write. She types the word love, but we see that she's really struggling. She can't. She doesn't know what to say. So she goes to sleep. She ends up getting a phone call in the middle of the night. It's Miranda. She says that she's alone with Chinese food, and Carrie says that she was asleep. And Miranda says she got all choked up watching stuff alone on TV and Carrie figures out, oh God, you know, Brady's with Steve and she's alone and she's sad. 
So for once, Carrie's not a completely selfish asshole. She goes to be with her friend who's alone. She knows it's New Year's, she can't get a cab, so she runs along in this turban and her PJs in a big coat to go be with Miranda. We see, like, they're playing all Lang Syne. We see how Samantha's spending her New Year. We see Charlotte and Harry and Lily. And um, it's just a sweet scene. I always like this one where the snow's falling. Carrie's running to be with Charlotte. Sorry, I keep saying Charlotte. With Miranda. Steve and Brady are passed out. Uh, Miranda thinks she's going to be alone. But again, this is where Carrie shows up. And she's for once not completely selfish about things. I love this version of Auld Lang Syne playing. There's a knock at the door. Of course, it's Carrie. They hug. It's really sweet. Meanwhile, Louise runs into her ex. And obviously, there's Sparks. Big is spending New Year's alone, we see. And shocker of shockers, we have Stanford and Anthony. So they've met up and they end up kissing at midnight. It's so cute. I thought I got a picture of it. Apparently, I didn't. But here's the girls enjoying their their, uh, New Year's together. So from here, we cut over to spring. They go to a fashion show. I hate Carrie's outfit here. I don't understand this look. They never say who the designer is. It's just they just call it the, the fashion show. I believe, yeah, Mercedes Benz fashion show, but or fashion week, but they never say who this designer is. This part always felt weird and out of place for me. It's like, hey, we want to throw a little fashion your way, so we're going to show you a fashion show, but they never talk about designers, who they're there to see, and what the what the collection is. Meanwhile, we get a funny line here where Charlotte is talking about what she would say if she ran into Big, saying, I curse the day you were born. So here's this loud, out-of-place fashion show with no designer name anywhere. It just, I just don't quite follow the point of this. It, I don't know. But uh, at the end of the fashion show, we do see Samantha gets red paint thrown on her. Because these people don't like that they're wearing, uh, that she's wearing fur. And she says, God, I miss New York. So it's a couple of weeks later, we get to meet Louise's boyfriend, Will. And Carrie says it's just in time for Valentine's Day. They realize that they love each other. So she gets a Valentine's from Lily. Uh, Sam calls Carrie and talks about her Valentine's Day plans. She is making sushi for Smith. So she's going to lay naked and have this sushi all over herself when Smith comes home. That's the plan. So we see Carrie and Miranda are going to meet up and have a nice Valentine's Day together. In a rather ridiculous scene at dinner, it's over-the-top Valentine's, which, I mean, I get that that happens. But the waitress says, I'll be right back to take you and your girlfriend's order. Like, I know this was, what, 2008, but I doubt that <laughs> you would say that. You'd be like, I'll be right back to take your order, <laughs> you know? Um, so Carrie is saying that she's the reason Big didn't get out of the car. You can see how her feelings have progressed. Miranda confesses, eh, I said something to him at the rehearsal dinner. She explains that she bumped into Big, and she ex- she had told him that the two of you were crazy to get married. Carrie absolutely freaks the fuck out and says, for five months, you've been carrying this around and you didn't tell me for five months. She said she was waiting for the right time. And she said she's never kept a secret from Miranda, except for she comes back and says, nope, that's not true. For the last five months, I think it's a huge mistake that you left Steve. There, there's a secret. Meanwhile, Samantha is laying on a table saying, any minute now, 40 minutes later, Uh, She talks about sushi and no Smith. Then three, I think it's three hours later, he ends up showing up. She throws sushi at him and says, enjoy your hand roll. So then we see Miranda is waiting outside of Carrie's building in a cab. They haven't spoken in three days, the longest they've ever gone. Now here's an Easter egg here. They're sitting in the cab. It's quiet. They're trying to make up. It's awkward. The cab driver is the same one. That, do you remember the episode where they had a deep conversation about whether or not Charlotte should be the quote up the butt girl? And he kept turning around to look at them, same cab driver. So just a little Easter egg there. I think that's so cool. But Miranda decides she might give it a go with Steve. She doesn't know. She's at the therapist's office. She's scared that it's going to happen again. And she's talking about how can I know it won't happen again? And the therapist says, well, you won't. And he says, how do I know you won't punish me 
for the rest of my life. Well, you won't. So they come up with this plan about possibly meeting up if it's going to work out. So I'm going to leave off here because there's one more part to this movie. Will they or won't they? I know we all know the answer, but who cares? I'm excited. Let's see. (laughs) This is back when, you know, well, I can't even say I liked Miranda. I didn't hate Miranda the way I do now. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. It's so much fun to walk through this movie again. I can't wait to get to Sex and the City 2. I'm jumping right into that next uh, after this last part of the original Sex and the City movie. And I hope you guys have a fabulous day. Check out Patreon. We got lots going on over there, going over the original series. And I hope you stay healthy and safe. And I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.